Hello YouTube and welcome to another edition of Locked Out. Now this is the finale for the Ace series. Um, I'm going to show you a few basics and, and some other stuff that I haven't covered yet because I wanted to save it for the end after you've gotten the grounding from the other ones. So if anything I say or do here doesn't really make any sense, uh, do yourself a favor, watch, watch the prior videos because there's information in there that you'll miss. And that's really my fault. I should have really done this a little bit better. But I figure, what the hell, the info's here. I want to put it together and just get it out there. You uh, do with it what you want. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go over, in this one, I'm going to go over the differences between various little pieces of metal that we use for these parts on here. Um, this one here is just a regular bobby pin. Uh, this one here came with the southered pick, and this one here came with the ace, uh, the the huck picks. Um, and I'm gonna just give you a really nice close up of of how similar all three of these are. Um, but the one that came with the huck pick is clearly superior because it's got this little bend here at the end that gives you greater surface area on the heads of the the pins and the in the lock and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about there I also wanted to give you a shot of because you know a couple of video videos ago when I was detailing the uh, when I was detailing the huck picks here I uh, I just kind of breezed over you know the differences between these o-rings that go here and these o-rings that go underneath this little ring here and in the center and go underneath these and, and in the center part of the pick. There's not a lot of difference between them but there is a very clear difference and I'm going to give you a nice good close-up shot of that. <sighs> also I want to show you how to decode uh, uh, a lock with this tool. I'm going to show you how to use this to decode that so that you can uh, put those numbers into a special key cutting machine or anything else you can you can even just take those numbers and use it to make your own key uh, you can also take the numbers and use them to set uh, this pick just without having to actually go in there and try to you know pick it randomly the way the pick is designed to work you can actually loosen this ring all the way use this tool to set all of these pins at the depths they need to be after you recorded it the first time uh, and then and then lock this this uh, chuck back down and then use this thing just like the key it, it works every time so <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to do that um, I'm also going to discuss a little bit uh, how immediate wear and tear affects the usefulness of, of, of especially this one here even my badass one is vulnerable to this it's not as vulnerable but it is vulnerable somewhat and the phenomenon I've noticed is if you use this to pick say four or five locks at a time uh, and then you go back and you try to pick the first lock again you probably won't get it because the dynamics have changed so much over the course of one or two picks even just one or two picks let alone four or five or six the dynamics in here have changed the friction dynamics have changed so much between one pick and the next that uh... it's not going to operate the same way even if you count the number of turns that you put on this chuck which i started out doing you know the chuck has regular you know regular little uh... uh chamfers or whatever not cut into it and you can line those up with this hex nut here and you can actually count how many of these will spin by this nut and you can use that to kind of meter your tension at least I thought but not really at all because if you get this out of the box right and you tighten this down let's say you tighten it four notches alright and then you test each one of these pins for how much tension is on them and you kinda of like just kinda of bear that in mind and then you loosen it up and then you do it again immediately tighten it down exactly the same four turns or four clicks not four turns not four full turns because if you put four full turns it's going to be really tight 
but four of these go by, which is uh, uh, just a little less than half of it, I think, or maybe it's actually half of it, who knows. Anyway, you let four of these go by this, and then you try the tension trick again. Just go, go and pull back and forth on all these pins all the way around, and you will see a very clear difference in the tension, not only on each individual pin, but in the tension pattern as a whole. See, every time you tighten this thing down, you move it a little bit. And even though this set screw is in here, it moves some microscopic amount. And every time you move it, you change the gap between the chuck and and the, the pick body. You change this little microscopic gap. And you could fit maybe a piece of aluminum foil uh, in here. Maybe, maybe tissue paper. Let me get my diopter out here. Okay. Now, there is a gap. There is a gap between this right here and the body here. There is a gap. And it's about wide enough for a piece of tissue paper. And that gap goes all the way around the tool. And the little set screw, let me see if I can do this trick in quick focus again here. And we, and we do this trick where if you change how much you screwed in the set screw, it alters that gap all the way around. The more you screw this set screw in, the wider that gap gets right underneath the screw, and the narrower it gets on the exact opposite side of the tool. Which means that your tension is going to vary accordingly. These two are going to slide really relatively easily. Of course, I've got it locked down a little bit right now. Um, compared to, say, the back one, which, I mean, there's at least, no, oh, there's at least eight or nine pounds on that right there. It's, it's in there pretty good. But, uh, anyway, uh, your, your, your use of this over time will change that, that gap variable, and it will change the amount of of friction that's on these pins that's stopping them from sliding back and forth every single time. Now, I have not figured out an effective way to deal with that other than, like I said, taking along your little tool, taking along one or two of these, taking along some lube like that three in one I showed you. You know, that might be useful. Um, but just don't, you know, don't think you're going to get called to a job and take just this tool with you and be able to get through anything. If you do, it's the stroke of it's the very stroke of luck itself. You should really take this tool, this thing, and at least uh, an extra couple of these, and maybe even for this modified version, you want to take along an extra one of these in case you want to vary uh, the amount of rubber that's in here, which will change again the the tension dynamics of the whole setup. Um, this right here. Like I said, if you if you want to keep the hybrid, what's what's left of creating the hybrid, if you want to keep what's left of that, um, you can, and it would probably come in useful for certain applications. But I can't really think of one right offhand where this has ever worked. This thing has never worked either. But that's more my fault than anything. I mean, I didn't cut the grooves down here for the, I didn't cut channels for the pins or none of that. I, you know, this is seriously just, uh, you know rednecked in there. Uh, let's see here. I do want to talk about the, the O-ring here because before, I'm sure you'll recall, I told you I'm going to maybe put an extra O-ring in here to see if that didn't help out for picking this lock over here, which it might help out. We never know. I actually put one in there and then I put two in there. And I think there might even be three in there. I'm not sure. But I put an extra couple of these from the Huck set in here so that I've got the capability to put some really, really massive tension uh, down on these pins, which is going to be necessary if you're going to if you're going to try and crack an Ace Two lock. Um, let's see here. Uh, 
We want to check. Yeah, this 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 hex screw. I remember I told you that this this entire uh, uh, assembly here, um, this chuck is high quality. It's not. It's not as high quality as I thought it was. Um, this little hex screw in here actually stripped, and the screw itself isn't stripped. It's it's stainless. The screw is fine. It's this crappy pot metal around it that gave up the ghost on me. It's the upper threads in here that screwed up. And uh, it's only pure luck that I can actually still tighten this down to where it won't spin around on me. What I'm going to end up having to do is I'm going to have to get a tap. And I'm going to have to, for, well, first I'm going to have to get a drill. And I'm going to have to widen the hole a little bit. And I'm going to have to get a tap and then an entirely new set screw to put in here uh, probably the next size up and uh, hopefully this this little edge of the collar here won't break out on me because I think this is die cast or something cheap like that it's not it's not really it's not made out of the same metal as the locking ring on this the locking ring is really what I was talking about earlier when I said that's really nice metal because this is this is really nice burnished you know, stainless steel or whatever. It's it's really good. This is a different kind of metal, which also kind of makes me wonder about the possibility of galvanic corrosion over time. These two different metals right next to each other, there will be stuff that builds up between them. Um, let's see. I think that's uh, pretty much it, and we're going to go ahead and get to start trying to, you know, get into this uh, this other lock here. I'm going to try and get into it, show you a little bit of good tips, and then I'm going to show you how to uh, actually read this this pick here and so that you can create your own key for it. Get all this other stuff out of the frame. And before I do that, real quick, I'm just going to give you some close-up details of these two. Let me get my oh, diopter, please. Okay, there we go. Now, yeah, that's that's pretty good. You can see on these O-rings. Oh, let me. You can't really see yet because the lighting still sucks. You can see on these O-rings. This one is perfectly round. Now these are the ones that go around the shaft itself to, to help do the tension on the hot picks. These are the ones that are inside the middle. And they're kind of flat. They're not the same shape at all. They're cylindrical. They're, uh, uh, this is really screwing with my lighting here. I can't really give you a good shot of this. I'm going to try and get something else. Let's get this out here. Maybe this will work. Who knows? But anyway, you can see that it's flat. It's much more like a different kind of, of cross section altogether. It's not a. Uh, it's not perfectly round like a, like I don't know, like a lifesaver. There's actually flat parts on it. The, the top and the bottom are flat. Um, I also want to give you a little bit of detail regarding these. Now, the one on the left here is the Huck version. The one in the middle is the ones that you get from Southerd, which they don't give you any spares, but they do um, they do give you the ones that are included on the lock itself and get the gap just right here alright and we got to die off her one more time eh, alright uh, I can't really hold it my hand as steady as I used to but whatever Close enough for non-government work, right? Yeah. Alright, let's see here. Now, this one, like I said, is from the Huck Picks. And you can see 
but it's got that nice rounded thing and what that does is it gives us more surface area when we're trying to contact these pins in here you can see that they're round well by having this thing be rounded as well you're actually giving us greater contact with those pins it kind of decreases wear on the pins and it also makes the pick work easier especially this rounded part you know there's no jagged edges anywhere so nothing's going to get hung up on any of the internal uh, stuff now this one in the middle is the one that came with the uh, uh, the southern and it is almost exactly identical to the one on the far right here which is just a bobby pin that is a bobby pin and it's uncanny even this comes with if you if you take a bobby pin and you break it off right at the uh, right after the elbow right after the turn you're gonna have precisely what these are because they are exactly that same length even the nice high quality one from Huck with the little loop here in the end you know the little fancy touch there that's not really necessary but uh, it's nice that they did it but uh, even this right here if you unfurl this it's only just a little bit longer than these is uh, engineering wise these are almost exactly identical in in thickness even in even in strength they're almost identical except because of the way this one is shaped on the end it is stronger than the others come on can I actually get some like focus thank you that is so cool all right so we've gone over the different pins the different little uh, o-rings in there <sighs> so now I guess we're just gonna get right to the nitty-gritty and try and do this now I'm just going to show you once again this is perfectly working unmodified ace 2 lock pretty much working pretty much unmodified key I mean I had to scrape some crap off there and clean it up but so we're gonna loosen this pretty much all the way take this to even out our pins where they're poking out here beyond the end and you don't have to get real fancy with this just use your bloody finger because it's not going to be it's not going to be a big deal the only reason you want to flatten them out anyways is to make it go into the lock a little easier now I'm going to start out with way too little tension so I can show you what an under tension looks like so I'm going to put this in now let's say that this lock is mounted in the machine alright we're just going to pretend And now, I stuck this in there and I turned it back and forth as far as it'll go in both directions a few times, which is essentially how you use these. But then I'm going to show you what that results in when you've got way too little tension. And I've put black stuff, I put black marker on the, uh, on the little out, on the little external bend parts so that you can kind of see them a little bit easier but you see how they're all pretty much the same depth I mean they're not all exactly but they're pretty much the same they're pretty much the same that means you've got too little tension if you've got this situation all the way around the pick you have too little tension in this right here and whatever kind of pick you're using, you've got whatever you're using to put friction on these, you've got way too little if they're all going down to pretty much the same depth. So now we reset it, and I'm going to show you what an over tension looks like. Because I'm actually under the impression that I should be able to do an over tension, uh, even with an ace two. <laughs> so now you saw that I tightened the crap out of that. And I'm going to stick this in here and jiggle it around a little bit. Okay. This is perfect. This is what you call too much tension. Too much tension is where 
they're all at the same level again, but most of them are really near the one and two position. They're not really falling out much. Now, if you really, if you see something like this, do you see this one's gone down to a three or a four maybe? It's gone down pretty deep. So it might be possible with this setting right here to actually get this lock if we just keep at it. Um, let me refocus so I don't annoy you. Okay. Now, it might be possible to get this lock with this set like this if we just keep doing this. Maybe, maybe shake it a little bit faster because I'm vibrating, almost like doing tremolo on a guitar. You know, it, you got to do like the BB King thing, go like, go like this. You know, uh, uh, do that, do that with the other hand, <laughs> and feel. Try to balance the the tension. Don't shove it all the way in as deep as you can, and don't just rest it on the springs either, because none of those are really going to work. What you want to really try and do is balance out the pressure. Keep the pick as far back as it'll go, but just barely. To where you're just barely fighting the pressure from those springs and you see even if I kept this is the thing about an ace 2 with a variable spring pressure in it even if I kept with this for a while it was not ever ever gonna work because the tension isn't right I've got to have alternating tension on these so I'm thinking right now what I'm probably going to do is figure out something where I can, you know, slip a shim in there in order to vary tension on each alternating pin, you know, to like where, you know, this one, oh shit, to where, you know, say this one right here would be really light tension and the one next to it would be really heavy, and the one next to it would be really light one next to it would be really heavy and the way you'd accomplish that I think is by jamming some thin pretty much anything that as long as it's sturdy sturdy enough jam something in here that's thin enough and just put it on there on every single other one of these and that might work maybe I haven't tried it I just conceptualized it uh, uh, about I don't know, about five hours ago when I started on these. Uh, but I haven't really had an, an opportunity to try that. I, I will, though. Um, so this, picking picking this is just not going to happen today, folks. There's just no, there's no way. Uh, I wasn't really holding out hope for it. But I will show you a few other things. Okay, let's say you've got a scenario where... Somebody wants to sell you a vending machine. And the trouble is, they don't have the keys. They can prove to you that they own the vending machine. It's not like they just loaded it up in the back of a truck and drove off with it, and now they're trying to sell it to you off Craigslist. They, they, they're, they, they've got a legitimate route. They've got a lot of other keys. They do vending stuff. They just have a few machines where the keys either broke, got lost, strayed, stolen, whatever. So there's a few of these sitting around with no key. And the way you would go about figuring out what the key is doing is you'd stick this in here and you put very light tension on this ring. In fact, no tension at all. Just jam it in there and let all of the pins rise that are going to rise. Just let all of the pins go up. And you see this one didn't even move. And I think that's probably just because the pick screwed up. <laughs> okay. Now, see how they're all pretty much even all the way around. That's with zero tension. Okay? That tells me what the range is going to be. It's This this right here is going to be 7. That's going to be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and 0 finally up at the top. But uh, anyway, that's what's going to give us our information about what we're dealing with in here. Okay, so then what we do, see that was almost completely all the way off. Uh, then what we do, even everything back out again, just 
kind of Even these off. And then we tighten this down. Not a whole lot, but go down to as tight as you can with two fingers and then back it off maybe a half a turn. And then stick it back in here and see what you can do. It probably won't pick because, again, this is an Ace 2. It's got super modified, like everything, and, and it's probably not going to pick. Um, but you can get an idea. And you, as you go in here, rattle it around a little bit more, you can get an idea of which ones are going to be deep setters and which ones aren't. And if you've got a good, good kind of memory, just reset all this. Don't leave this tight at all again. Get to where it just starts clamping down and then turn it out again. Put this in here and then apply some tension. Now if this is mounted, this will be a lot easier. But I'm just going to spin it around so I can show you. And what you do is you go in, take your thumb, set it right here on the barrel and then kind of move it forward very slowly and gently while keeping tension on the tool. I'm turning this entire thing this this way. I'm turning in this direction. And if this thing wasn't turning, if it was mounted in something, I wouldn't be able to show you this by, by doing this. But I'm constantly keeping tension with this hand on the lock and this hand on the pick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this in here and I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to roll my thumb forward. This is very important. So you can have steady tension. You, you put your thumb here and you roll it forward like this so that you can have really, really, really steady interaction with these. And then you're going to feel a click. Keep tension. Go around. That one's not even clicking yet, so it's not binding. That one clicked. That one didn't. Okay, so we just go back around. Right back to where we started. Click that one back in. Because it fell out. Click that one in. It's pretty much all the way up there. It just popped out again. That one in. That one in. That one in. This one. And, you know, things keep popping out. I can't keep proper tension in this way. But just to give you the idea, what you'd do is you'd go all the way around and roll your fingers up. And then as soon as you've got it in and this starts to turn, pull it out immediately without going to the first detent. Because the first detent's 25%. Everything's going to pop back out. And you just have to repick it again. So turn it halfway between fully locked halfway between fully locked and 25 percent and this is 25 percent this is one quarter of the way around because it's going to go normally it's going to go there then it's going to go here then it's going to go here when it's fully unlocked all right and what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it to where it's not going to get caught up every time it goes around. So there's some swing right here between the first between between locked and the first detent. There is some swing. There's some decent swing. You can see how much. And because I've modified this key again, I chopped this little bit off. I can pull it straight out. All right. Once you've got it to that point, and you're and you're SPPing it and you're in there like this. You've got these to the appropriate depth. So all you gotta do is take this, well actually don't tighten that yet. Once you're sure you've got it to the appropriate depth, go all the way back around again. Don't move the pick. But go all the way back around again and press these as far in as they will go. Oh, I just screwed up because I put it in the thing. 
it would be a lot easier to not screw up if this was mounted inside of a machine but then it would be a lot harder to film so screw it anyway and put this in here and you can see by looking at all these pins that they are at the right depths they are all at the shear depth for this lock so after you've pressed them all in there and you're in that little in-between space after you've pressed them all down take and tighten the chuck as tightly as you can okay then withdraw the pick and take a look at it and that is your coating for this lock and then what you can do and then what you can do is you can take this instrument and you can go around and you can measure the gap like this this one right here is going to be a two and the way that you do this is you hang it on the top of the tool right here and then try to fold this down into the gap and if it won't go or if it stands a thing up then it's the wrong one okay like this one here is a zero this one's a two okay see how that's pretty much well, it's really difficult to do this a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be to do this through a camera let me find a good deep one okay here we go this one's a five I know it's a five or a six okay here this one's a six let me get the right distance alrighty here we go this is how you use this you hook it on here and you swing the little tab down and there should be essentially no gap between either this or that and it should be essentially level and if it is you've taken a good measurement and what you do is you just go all the way around the pick at this point, remember, like I said, we've gotten the half a turn. You go around the entire pick, and you just write down in which direction you're going the depths of all the pins. And then the cool part is, once you screw the pick down, and you've written down your depths, you can just take it, stick it in the lock, and it'll go all the way now. It'll go all the way, because you got it through that little first halfway point and now your pick is locked down and if you lose if you lose what it is if you lose the combination you can just go back through and you can figure out which ones slipped readjust them according to this and then uh, go back to town but that's how you decode a lock um, you can also decode a key the same way of course you can just take these and go around and then let me let me show you a comparison to what this tool looks like heads up next to the key when the tool has actually opened the lock I'll put the tool inside its I opened the lock position just real nice and quick here and clamp down the chuck Get this thing its quarter turn, pull it all the way out. Use the key to relock that. Use the pick to Tuh. how ridiculous. Okay, it must have moved. Redo that. Even off everything. Put this in here use the key to lock it or unlock it I mean and then oh that's why it didn't work the first time I didn't have the stuff loose but whatever anyway now let me do this uh, uh, alright <sighs> now it should be right you know let me check to make sure it's right before I start taking codes off of it 
All right, it's right, because of course it went and finished locking the lock. So this is right now. So now we can do this again. All right. And I'm going to show you heads up, side by side, exactly what these look like. So that you can see they're essentially mirror images of each other. Okay. Is that next one? Here's that one that's flat that pretty much doesn't exist. Here's that one that's flat that pretty much doesn't exist. Here's that two. Here's uh, what looks like a five. Here's uh, probably another two. And there's a... Uh, I don't know, that's probably another five, actually. But anyway, you can see that the way these work is by duplicating the key. And you can actually, once you've got it locked down, you know, once you've got the chuck end locked down, you can take this and you can set it inside of a thing and it will cut a new key for you based on that right there. It'll work. So keep those little bits of information in mind and have fun with the hybrid if you can build one. If you need help, just email locked out and uh, someone here will be very glad to help you. Um, just try to keep uh, all mention of possibly illegal activities out of your vocabulary because we don't like being sued or harassed by the government. But, uh, yeah, have a, have a good day, YouTubers, and that's the Ace Series.